the death of the Australian Renewable Energy Policy. We actually had quite a strong governance framework with some positive results. We had a carbon price since 2012, resulting in reduction of emissions of 7.6%. We had incentives for solar, we had grants, we had feed-in tariffs, and over 2 million households currently have solar energy on their roofs with a prediction by 2020 of half that number again. The renewable energy target, or the RET, I'll refer to it as, has been incredibly successful. In South Australia, where I live, the target was 20% by 2020. We're now almost at 30%. But at the same time, the federal government was pursuing policies in the electricity market, which appear to be in direct conflict with these renewable policies. So let's look at what's happened with the electricity industry. Electricity prices in Australia are comparable to the highest in the world. They've increased in the last five years, comparable now to Germany's prices. The government has said that the carbon tax and that the REC have been responsible, but the data does not support this. The real problem has been overinvestment in poles and wires and a fundamental failure in our national electricity market. One of their objectives was to keep prices low, and it's failed in this. Since 2009, network companies have invested $45 billion upgrading and extending the network at a time when energy demand has actually decreased and energy efficiency increased. The trouble is they have been paid on the amount of assets that they built. So they've gone ahead and built a huge number, amount of assets, some of which have never ever been connected to the grid. The Australian Bureau of Statistics has found that the year before the network started investing in the grid, their pre-tax operating profit was $5.4 billion. Two years after they started spending on poles and wires, their profit margin had increased by 67%, and over that time, electricity prices had risen over 40%. Energy analysts have estimated that of that $45 billion of investment, about half of it was unnecessary. So the question is, what impact has that had on renewables? Consumers started to move to solar panels. Nobody was too worried about this. What was worrying to the coal-fired uh, power generators was that solar peaked at the same time as their peak time, which basically meant that their profits were eroded. Possibly in response to the high prices, our consumers are going to move off the grid and go you know, into battery storage. Today, one in 10 households get their power from solar panels. What's happened is that the feed-in tariffs got people used to this idea. We don't have them anymore, but people, you know, 
they like it, they're continuing to invest in solar panels. The red has encouraged wind, of course, into the market. It's about 12% um, of the electricity market comes from wind. The reality is that currently Australia is producing more energy than it needs, and the fossil fuel generators are not happy, because for every kilowatt of solar power, a kilowatt of coal-fired power is not being used. So their profits are being eroded. Now you think that this would be a good thing, that the point of the RET was actually to displace coal generation with renewable ge uh, generation. It is good for the community, but it's very bad for the conventional power industry. The, the mandated renewable energy target was for, uh, 46, 41,000 gigawatt hours by 2020. When that legislation came in, this equated to about 20% by 2020. But with the demand in energy dropping, it's now equating to about 30%. It's cutting their market share. So, on the insistence of these companies, the government has now instigated a review of the RET, which is headed by a renowned climate sceptic, Dick Warburton. And on the basis of a predicted cut in the RET, investment in renewables is being cut back and delayed. So in conclusion, we had a comprehensive climate change policy, but it's been completely dismantled by a current government, whose first action when taking office was to abolish the Climate Commission, the independent body advising on climate science. Australia no longer has a Minister for Science. Our national electricity market has failed to meet one of its major objectives to keep electricity prices down. It's not been because of the carbon price of the rent, it's due to perverse government incentives to the conventional energy industry. There needs to be changes to the market structures. Basically, if the energy companies continue their business as usual, people are just going to put in solar without government incentives, go off the grid. If energy companies think they have a problem today, it's only going to get worse. One of the energy companies, Ergon Energy, sees its business model changing to one that connects produce consumers however they generate energy and whether they store it in batteries or input into the grid through solar. I think it remains that to get this happening, we need to take individual and community responsibility. And I thank you for your presentation. It's the solution, really. There's a lot of examples of community energy around the world, but how do we do this on a mass scale is the question. And the music that you would have heard <laughs> by the Warumpi Band of Midnight Oil and it says, it sings, stand up and be counted. Thank you very much. <laughs>